I'm a simple guy. When I moved from Alaska to Seattle, I ditched my car for the big city glamour of public transportation. And I want to get a car again. It's something I'm working towards because I get nostalgic for burning rubber on the open highway. I had to think of a way to burn rubber on the bus and it led me back to one of my personal favorite topics, 3D Game Boy Advance games. Because this is punching weight where all roads lead to the weird, ambitious, and unnecessary. And it's time for another installment of I Can't Believe It's GBA 3D. But first, a quick shout out to the Dollar Shave Club. This video brought to you in part by some of their radical products that help keep you a dude's neck and beard is looking fresh as hell. If you want more information about the Dollar Shave Club, stick around to the end of the video. They're giving away their starter kit for just $5. And if you go to dollarshaveclub.com slash SSFF, hey, that's where you want to go. Tell them Derek sent you. And Grace. The times they have changed it. The mobile market and Steam are now the go-to destinations for trash games. But the licensed video game, man, that used to be the undisputed king of shovelware. And there are many joys to be had rummaging around the licensed game trash heap. However, not the least of which is finding that rare gem that's actually amazing. Previously, we discussed the technically impressive GBA port of Crazy Taxi, and just for fun, we also tested the shameless knockoff Simpsons Road Rage, which miraculously also got a GBA port. And something amazing happened, friends. We got one. We got one! If you didn't know, Simpsons Road Rage is a Crazy Taxi clone released in 2001 for the PlayStation 2, Xbox, and Nintendo GameCube that was so shameless, Sega took EA to court for patent infringement. The suit was settled out of court, and the GBA game was released two years later in 2003 with THQ Publishing instead of EA. And what we got could only be described as Mode 7 graphics pushed to absolute insanity. Everything looks all right until, oh no, there are hills. Oh God, we're going up and down. This is amazing. And the horizon just stretches until it's a blinding stack of colors. Oh, I swear, some licensed games, it's like developers are just given money to make whatever the hell they want. It says Simpsons on the box, it'll sell. Just get it done, we don't care what you do. I don't know how else to explain this. I'm not gonna lie to you, playing this game will give you a headache at first, but it's so beautiful, I, I can't look away. The way the world bends and dips, it feels unnatural. I've never seen anything like it. And maybe that's for good reason? If you don't know what Mode 7 is, it was a popular technique in the 16-bit days before true 3D. It's what gives that flat, stretchy look to Mario Kart, F-Zero, and Pilot Wings on the Super Nintendo, and some GBA games like the surprisingly good Konami Crazy Racers. But they never break the cardinal rule, keep it flat. You can have jumps, ramps, and bridges, but keep it flat. Simpsons Road Rage for the GBA spits in the eye of tradition, blazing its own path with one of the most insane looking games I've ever seen. And not only does it look insane, some of these maps are gigantic. But enough about the visuals. Simpsons Road Rage also plays pretty damn well and has a ridiculous amount of content. Controls are great, frame rate is smooth, the actual car models are impressively detailed, and there's even models for your passengers. Though distinguishing between a simple line and an actual wall takes some getting used to. Like any good Simpsons game, it's loaded with characters, references, and familiar locales. Plus, five modes of play, six cities, 15 drivers, and 10 missions with some wonderfully bizarre objectives. Yep, I am Krusty the Clown, driving and balancing on a ball what even is this game? Plus a bunch of unlockable stuff like the ability to customize every color of a character, including the driver. Look, I made evil Homer. I made evil Homer. I made evil Homer. One problem though, password saves only. Again, I bet THQ wanted to save money on this game, so battery backups were out of the equation. But our hat is off to Japanese developer Altron, who were also responsible for the GBA port of R-Type 3, Pocky and Rocky with Becky, and a ton of other games like- WHAT?! RoboPit for the PlayStation?! No wonder why this game is great! Oh, just when I didn't think I could love you anymore, Simpsons Road Rage GBA. But okay, Mode 7 is fancy fake 3D. Let's move on to a real 3D GBA game. 
Smashing Drive, coming to us from Ray Light Studios. Using the same Blue Roses engine that powered their extremely impressive tech demo of Resident Evil 2, Smashing Drive is cut from the same arcade cloth as Crazy Taxi, but with an emphasis on action and explosions. I guess you're a Taxi 2, but it's a race against the other Taxi to the finish line. In order to win, you'll need to hit ramps and alternate paths for shortcuts and power-ups. Supersonic speakers, turbo jets, monster truck wheels, it's sort of a mix of Crazy Taxi and Mario Kart. It's big, dumb, loud explosions fun. It's hard to overstate how impressive Smashing Drive GBA is. Unlike Crazy Taxi Catch a Ride, Smashing Drive has a real sense of speed. Though the draw distance isn't as far, roads feel more cluttered. Frame rate takes a hit when things get messy, and things often get messy. But you just gotta respect the developer's dedication to the original game here. It might look like an eyesore, but ramps, buildings, boats, Bridges, freeways, airport runways, it's all here. Drive under landing planes, plow through a bridge with giant blades on your car, drive up through a T-Rex skeleton. I mean, it looks terrible, but in a really charming way. I don't know how you can drive up a building and hit King Kong in the ass and not smile and say, man, people worked really hard on this game and they just did it. Smashing Drive GBA is also a genuinely enjoyable experience because it meets you halfway. You don't need to be very precise when hitting jumps, taking turns, or dodging traffic. It's fast and loose and a really enjoyable romp. It's not a particularly difficult game, definitely nothing like Simpsons Road Rage, but that's fine. I still had a lot of fun. And the music has lyrics. That's not something you see too often. No, And why couldn't this team make Crazy Taxi? I would have loved to hear low fidelity offspring songs coming out of my GBA speakers. Really, I was so damn impressed with Smashing Drive GBA, I just had to look at another Ray Light game. Big Mother Truckers is essentially a clone of Sega's 18-wheeler America Pro Trucker, which was essentially Crazy Taxi, but with big rigs. It was never a big hit like Crazy Taxi, but it still inspired a few clones of its own, one of which was Big Mother Truckers, which found its way to just about every system on the market at the time. Ray Light would return to port the game to both the GBA and DS, sporting their impressive Blue Roses engine once again. Now, Coming off of Smashing Drive, Big Mother Truckers is completely different from what I was expecting. Instead of an over-the-top arcade experience, it's more of a simulation game that's economy-based. And not at all being familiar with this game, I was a little overwhelmed at first. The game starts with Ma telling you that she's retiring, and she'll give up the family business to whoever can get the most green in 60 days. <laughs> that's family for you. Naturally, I assumed this meant the most gold medals in first places, but not exactly. Salt Sea City is getting real desperate for steers and hogs. Uh, what? Demand for wood is picking up faster in Greenback. Uh, sure? Though you're rewarded for driving recklessly and smashing into traffic, the main goal is buying product. Fish, coal, wood, canned peaches, and talking to people at the bar to figure out where to drive to to sell it to get the most profit. It's like capitalist Balto, just cell phones instead of medicine. You can also experience the joys of falling into deep debt if you ever need help souping up your rig so that you can carry even better stuff. Also, can we talk about how it even includes what I would imagine is the worst part of truck driving? Parking? At least it doesn't make us do Thanksgiving with Ma. For a name like Big Mother Truckers, it's a little more stressful than what I thought would be a silly racing game. Okay, but it's unfair for me to get all huffy at this game because it wasn't exactly what I was expecting. So how does it play for a GBA game? Well, it's a pretty impressive looking game, but actually pretty mid-tier in the pantheon of 3D GBA games. Frame rate is a bit on the slow side, despite there not being that many cars on the road or elaborate set dressing. Control on your big rig is pretty good, feeling heavy and slow like an 18-wheeler ought to. All the cinematics are missing, meaning a lot of the personality and colorful characters are missing too. Though, the radio has a DJ, which is an unexpected touch. Welcome back to Yeehaw FM, folks! Yeehaw! The star of the show is really the economic system, but whereas a game like Smashing Drive stays in its lane, and The Simpsons Road Rage overachieves, Big Mother Truckers is a bit of a disappointment. Now, no disrespect to fans of the series, but we've seen what Raylight and the GBA can do, and this port just didn't really wow me. But hey, that happens sometimes when you dig in deep through the trash game barrel. And when you dig in, in that trash game barrel, I don't know about you, but I like to look and 
feel as fresh as possible. Listen, Grace and I have been actual customers of the Dollar Shave Club for over a year. We love it, it's a great deal, and you know, it's more than just razors. Everybody's got their daily grooming routine. I got my routine. Grace has her routine. You got your routine. But Dollar Shave Club, yeah, Dollar Shave Club has a whole bunch of grooming products that'll help you keep and keep and looking fresh, fresh and clean. Like, okay, I know what you're saying. Derek, you got the beard lifestyle. What do you know about shaving? Let me tell you something. You gotta maintain that neckline. And buddy, with a fresh razor and that butter, that shave butter, razor burn, those days are behind you. We're trying to protect your neck. Protect your neck with that shave butter. It's so great, you can't go back to those dark days of razor burn. It's over. And this is your ticket out of it. Dollar Shave Club is basically giving away their starter pack for only $5. And the starter pack features three sample sizes of their most popular products. You don't get that shea butter. They also got this lavender body soap and that one wipe Charlie's butt wipes. It says peppermint scent, original peppermint scent. Get that peppermint booty. They try to protect your neck, get that peppermint booty. All right, and it's only five bucks. You also get the executive razor with the weighted handle and the awesome grips and a cartridge of razors. And replacement razors are only a couple of bucks after that for the next month. It's a $5 deal and you can get it at dollarshaveclub.com slash SSFF. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash SSFF. And thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And if you are subscribed, hit the bell, hit the bell thing. I gotta remind you to hit the bell thing. I wish you didn't have to, but subscribe and then subscribe again. Huge shout out though to all of our Patreon supporters. This is a Patreon supported show. Their names are here. We actually just revamped our Patreon because we wanna grow our community in places like Discord. So please check that out. Thank you again for watching. We appreciate it. And we'll see you again real soon.